Hello, welcome to another session of Digital Slide Review and Sign Out. I'm Dr. Lewis Hassel, and our program is part of the Digital Anatomic Pathology Academy, a joint venture with the Digital Pathology Association and PATH Presenter. So our case today comes from the realm of GYN pathology um, and uh, presents interesting teaching points uh, for your consideration. Uh, the patient is a, pa um, a woman in her uh, 50s who has been noted to have abnormal bleeding and is found to have an enlarged uterus. Um, an MRI scan is done which shows the uterus to be enlarged and the uterine uh, endometrial stripe to be somewhat prominent, but also shows a little bit of subtle barrel-shaped uh, enlargement of the cervix. Uh, she has a GYN, uh, has an end endometrial biopsy performed, which uh, is signed out with very scant material, a lot of bloody background, as having a, uh, features of at least EIN uh, per the outside pathologist. So um, at the time of uh, evaluation, uh, an HPV test was done and uh, was found to be negative. And so uh, that of course helps to exclude many of the common tumors of the uh, cervix and uh, uh, lower genital tract. But there are a number of things which we should keep in mind that can be HPV negative. First of all, there are some squamous cell carcinomas, particularly in older patients that are HPV negative. Um, usually these are driven by P53 mutations. Uh, additionally, some cervical adenocarcinomas and of course endometrial carcinomas would be HPV negative. Many stromal and biphasic ne neoplasms would be negative as well as lymphoma. Uh, most smooth muscle tumors uh, and a variety of other tumors as you can see here from this list. So um, evaluation of a, atypical glandular fragments uh, within an endometrial biopsy is a challenge. And one of the most important differentials uh, to exclude in this situation is whether or not something is of cervical origin or of endometrial origin. Now, based on statistical models for the most frequently uh, encountered cervical cancers, we often use P16 as a surrogate march marker for HPV. Um, these tumors from the cervix will usually also be hormone receptor negative and most often PAX8 negative. Uh, in contrast, they'll often have uh, CEA positivity and be negative for vitamin. While endometrial tumors will have a rather splotchy or negative appearance for P16, B bimentin positive, PAX8 positive, hormone receptor positive, and monoclonal CEA negative. But, and this is a big but, the pitfall in this dichotomy are the non-HPV related cervical tumors, the so-called gastric types and so forth, and P53 mutated endometrial tumors, which may well be P16 positive and maybe hormone negative. So those create some uh, additional uh, potential pitfalls to be aware of and cognizant of as you uh, undertake this differentiation. Well, the patient came to surgery based on the assumption that she had an endometrial tumor. Um, and in fact, she did have tumor invading the uh, myometrium, but she also had tumor uh, diffusely involving her entire uh, cervix and endocervical canal, and then extending up into the endomyometrium. Here's that tumor uh, in one of the representative sections. And as you can see, it's forming large glandular spaces, variable sizes, some uh, nec uh, inflammatory necrotic debris, partial or incomplete glands here in areas. And as we come into higher magnification, you can see the variable sizing and shaping of these glands. You get uh, the impression of this sort of eruptive uh, intrusion into the stroma. Um, and you can see here that uh, these cells tend to have uh, slightly stratified epithelium, have basally formed nuclei, have a smooth uh, glandular border, uh, very akin to what you might see with endometrial tumors uh, as well. Um, and uh, here you can see, you know, the necrosis, the abnormal pattern of, in, of in, uh, in invasion of the uh, tumor, uh, and a little bit of uh, mucin type of uh, histiocytic reaction in the stroma, incomplete glands, 
variable sizing, and so forth. So uh, this tumor, um, in a uh, rather uh, anatomical sense, is centered uh, within the cervix. So most likely site of origin, based on the anatomy and the localization of the tumor, would be the cervix. So uh, immunohistochemistry workup was done. And in fact, this tumor is PAX8 negative. Um, it's P16 negative, um, but it's also bimentin negative, hormone receptor negative, um, and P53 negative. Um, so this is most likely not uh, an endometrial uh, tumor, and it's most likely a uh, uh, cervical derived adenocarcinoma that is HPV independent. Um, and I'm showing you a number of these uh, views so that you can get a feel for the morphology uh, in these tumors. Now, the fact that this tumor was such an advanced stage, in fact, it extended into the parametrium, um, so it would be at least a stage two, is also fairly typical of these uh, uh, so called gastric type. Uh, of cervical adenocarcinomas, the HPV negative uh, tumors. They tend to be fairly aggressive tumors to prevent at an, present at an advanced stage and to exhibit rather aggressive behavior, as you can see here, extending up into the myometrium uh, in this section. So uh, the HPV independent cervical carcinomas include of course, the TP53 mutant squamous cell carcinomas that I've mentioned, and then these gastric type of endocervical adenocarcinomas. And these basically fall into several different patterns. There is one pattern which uh, is so-called minimal deviation adenocarcinoma, where the glands are incredibly well di differentiated, um, but present in abnormal locations and have occasional uh, mitotic figures and a degree of nuclear atypia, even though they have a very bland appearance. Uh, mucinous uh, adenocarcinomas, which are usually positive with uh, uh, MUX6, uh, and intestinal and other patterns, which is probably where our tumor uh, today best fits. And additionally, of course, clear cell carcinoma can occur in the cervix and is uh, usually yeah, HPV independent and TP53 negative for mutation. And some endometrioid type tumors can also occur uh, in the cervix. Now, in the past, there have been so-called serous type ad adenocarcinomas, which were TP53 mutant, uh, but most of these are now thought to represent spread from the endometrium rather than primary cervical involvement uh, by uh, P53 mutated uh, carcinomas. Now, gastric type of endocervical adenocarcinoma does have some possible precursor lesions that you should be aware of. And these can include gastric metaplasia, very rarely seen, so-called lobular endocervical glandular hyperplasia, uh, which is uh, perhaps more frequently seen, uh, a little bit different from so-called tunnel complexes, but may uh, arise in endocervical glandular tunnel complexes and then produce a more hyperplastic of appearance. And then so-called gastric type uh, adenocarcinoma in situ. These are usually older patients, usually considerably about a decade older than usual uh, adenocarcinoma in situ or endocervical adenocarcinoma patients. Uh, and these tumors are usually sporadic, but uh, if the patient uh, has a germline STAC11 mutation, they, they do have this putz jaegers association. Um, they often, as I mentioned, present at an advanced stage, but even stage for stage, they tend to have an unfavorable prognosis. Immunohistochemistry and histochemistry can show positive uh, enteric type mucin, PAS Alshin blue being positive, MUX6 being positive. Sometimes P53 can be mutated. Uh, and we've mentioned the CEA and PAX8, CK7, and so forth can be variable. Um, and they're usually negative for uh, estrogen receptor, P16, PAX2, CA125, and so forth. So in summary, uh, this is a uh, Final sign up of endocervical adenocarcinoma of gastric type, a non HPV related uh, carcinoma. Well, thank you for joining us for this session. We hope that's been helpful for you and that uh, if you encounter these sorts of cases in your uh, caseload, you'll uh, re recall back to some of what we've talked about today. 
Um, if you have questions or comments, uh, please uh, don't hesitate to add them to uh, the, uh, the comments below. We always welcome your comments and look forward to uh, feedback. And as always, we encourage you to subscribe so that you'll be sure to catch uh, future releases from our channel and uh, uh, other materials that uh, become available uh, on our site. Uh, so until next time, thanks so much for joining me.